Hi, I'm Larry Grenadier, and you're watching ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching ForBassPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you today on location from Ithaca College in Ithaca, New York at the 2017 convention of the International Society of Bassists with our special guest today, Larry Grenadier. Hey, Larry. Hey, John. Nice to be here with you. Nice to meet you. I've been a, a fan of you and your music for a long time. I have followed what you've done and uh, you've played with a lot of my musical heroes. So it's, uh, it's very special to, uh, to be here with you and looking forward to hearing your story. Okay. You are originally from California. And yeah. then you went to Boston and you went to New York. And I know you've been with Brad Meldow for many years. You played with John Schofield, Pat Metheny, Joe Henderson, and a lot of uh, a lot of other jazz luminaries. But tell me a little bit about your musical upbringing. Were you from a musical family? Uh, records playing in the house, radio, you know, music, your brothers and sisters, any of that kind sure. of stuff. In that spirit, how would you describe your musical upbringing? Yeah, I was very fortunate. My, my father uh, was a musician uh, previous to having children. Before he had me, he was a trumpet player. And uh, so even though he had stopped playing professionally, he saw uh, it as a great thing for his children to learn musical instruments really early. So uh, following in his footsteps, I took up the trumpet when I was, uh, you know, in fourth grade. And um, my brother, older brother Phil, who still plays trumpet, and uh, my brother Steve, who was the guitar player. And so after playing the trumpet for a couple years and seeing that uh, it was a lot of work, <laughs> you know, that you have to really play every day to keep your... Are lip. you leading up to saying, so I took up the bass the because it wasn't well, a lot of work? It's like the next hardest instrument in a way, you know. But also because my brother played it so well, I was like, okay, let's do something else. And my dad thought it would be appropriate if I played bass because then I could play with the, the other two brothers. We're talking electric or upright? Yeah, so I sort of, he bought me an electric bass. And, you know, how it was with, with bass, you know, the second you learn it, somebody calls you to play a gig, you know? <laughs> so it was exactly like that. I was in fifth grade and I started playing in, in a rock band right, right away, like th that week, you know? Which I don't know what that says, but it, you know, it was lucky for me because it showed me right away the um, the power of learning music through experience, not through uh, uh, you know through books or you know it all it all helps. But I really learned it through doing gigs. Did you start listening to music differently once you discovered the bass? Did you have any bass influences or bass well, heroes? You know, it's hard to re remember that time. You know, it's so young. But I was listening. Um, I was hearing jazz, even though I was listening to rock and roll. But I was I was hearing jazz through my brothers and through my dad. And I started to hear probably, you know, first electric bass players, Stanley Clark and Jocko and uh, James Jamerson, of course. And... and um, but then I was hearing these other records, like these Miles and Train records, and I was hearing this other instrument, and I was really curious about it, and I connected with it, and so I, I borrowed an acoustic bass from school and started practicing that at home and starting to take classical lessons once I got, well, I was in junior high school. And, uh, Samandel and that whole record? The whole thing, all that repertoire and... Uh, French bow or German bow? French bow, okay. and to this day, right? And, um, and so that was really helpful to get a hold of the instrument, to, to get a sense of, you know, where the notes are, just a feel for the physicality. Of the, because functionally, uh, you know, I really feel strongly they're the same. But physically, technically, they're extremely different. So both helped each other. The electric stuff helped the upright and vice versa. And um, I was hearing all these great bass players on these records. So I started to, you know, my ear tor turned towards that sound. And I got to see Ray Brown when I was very young very close up at a, at a club nearby and um, you know then so I, I slowly you know just started spending more time with the upright and electric was kind of sitting in the corner more and more just because of the gigs that were coming my way and I you know I was very fortunate to play with a lot of great musicians way way before I should have <laughs> you know in the sense that you know they were so far ahead of, of me but I learned really quickly what people expect from the bass in the band and that these, all these great musicians were really listening to what I was playing. They were hearing everything going on around them, including the bass. So it really 
pushed me to get my act together quicker. Because I'll, you know, when you're playing with people your own age, we're also self uh, focused, you know, because we're, we're trying to figure out our own thing. Once you start playing with great historic musicians, you realize, wow, they're really listening when I'm playing, you know? So it really made me have to progress quicker, and my gigs really helped to show me what I need to practice. What inspired you to move to Boston? And I'm curious why you chose Boston as opposed to New York. I know you right. eventually ended up in New York, but that might seem like a more logical next step than Boston in between. What was up with that? Yeah, well, so I, I, I went to college out in California, and when I finished, I was planning on moving to New York. But then I got a call to play with Gary Burton's band. So I went out, and they were all based in Boston. So I moved there and got to play with Gary, which was great, for about a year. And uh, at the end of that, I moved to New York and, uh, you know, finally had come to New York, which I had always planned on doing and was very excited to be there. And it was super inspired by the environment and the, uh, you know, the, the amount of great musicians and also the, the constant day to day push to get better. I, I think I improved more in that first year in New York than I had previous years before. So it really that environment is nothing like it still you know and I know New York has changed but still it's, it's got this energy that pushes you to really constantly strive to get to the next step well I rattled off a, just a small handful of some of the people that you've played with tell us what's keeping you busy these days these days I am um, doing you know a few different things I continue to play with Brad Meldow which we've been playing for more than 20 years which is crazy you know and we continue to tour and make records and, and uh, every time we play it's a beautiful thing for me because it's uh, talking about listening you know I mean he listens more than anybody and, and the, 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 possible, the possibilities of making music with somebody with ears that big or you know there's no there's no end to it so we, we continue to enjoy that you know um, I am about to start a tour tomorrow with a band called Hudson which is a cooperative band of Jack DeJanet and John Schofield and John Modeski and myself. Is Jack playing drums or piano or both? He's playing he's playing drums and singing a little bit. Oh. And he does play piano, not in this band, but of course, yeah, he does play piano, yeah. Um, uh, so that's, uh, we, uh, record's coming out in a couple days. and uh, we're What's the title of the record? Well, the name of the band's Hudson and the name of the record's Hudson. Okay. And so that'll be out, I think, on June 9th. And... Um, so we're touring a lot this summer a bit and then in the fall. And so that's a nice thing to, to be doing. And then, you know, I, I, I just recorded a solo bass record for ECM. Uh, so I'm just finishing that up as far as mixing. And I hope to do some gigs solo. Like tonight. What's the title of your new record? I, I don't have a title yet. That's, okay. I have to come up with a title. But uh, it's been a really great process to think about what, what to do playing solo bass, you know. And when you say solo, you mean just you? Just bass. And not really overdubbing. I mean, it's a little bit overdubbing. But really, I wanted it to be more, be able to do it like on a gig, you know. So I hope to do some gigs like that this year, hopefully. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your equipment. I... Uh, I have three bases right now, which I've always had just one base, so it's kind of, I feel, uh, it's, it's, it's awkward actually to have three bases, because I'm never totally sure which one to play, but I like them all. Uh, one I really just use for traveling, though, it's just a, a Chinese uh, hybrid base that uh, the neck comes off so I can travel with it easy, which has been a great thing to travel with. And I have a base from Ben Puglisi, who's here at the workshop, uh, at the uh, convention. convention and um, he's a beautiful maker down in M Melbourne Australia and I was down there last summer and I played his bass and I loved it so I brought it back with me and uh, then I have an old German bass which I've had for about 20 years that um, I still love to play and uh, so you know, I, you know they all have different sounds and I you know I set them up with different strings depending on how I feel but what kind of strings do you use well you know you, you ask me today and you ask me tomorrow and it might be some I really change a lot because I'm always experimenting I'll tell you what I have right now right I mean on Ben's bass I have an olive uh, no sorry I have a beautiful gut string G string made by this great uh, string maker in um, in Berlin uh, named Gerald Gensler who makes amazing gut strings and then the bottom three are helicore hybrids. And on uh, the old German bass, I have it strung up for Boeing. So it's got 
bowing strings for that. You can't. Even, uh, it's got caplins and a super flexible. And um, on the uh, travel base, I have an olive G-string and uh, helicor is on the bottom you three. really do experiment. Standard, <laughs> standard tuning on all of them? Yeah, standard tuning, but I've been experimenting with different tunings. You know, that was part of the thing with solo, playing solo, was to experiment with, solo t with, with different tunings, which has been really, really fun to check out. So I'm trying to continue to explore that. Play through an amp? Sometimes. Uh, I, I, what I, my normal setup with most bands uh, live is uh, I use a mic that I put through a mic. It's, it's a Sheps mic that I put through a Grace Design uh, mic preamp. Uh, it go, feeds a powered monitor. And that's kind of like my own little system that I control. And then out to the house, depending on the band, I give them that signal and possibly a pickup signal as well so they can blend the two. Okay. How about the future? I mean, you mentioned a lot of stuff coming up, but beyond that, what is there? Is there something you'd like to do that you just haven't gotten around to yet? Or is there? I mean, you've got a lot of ambitious projects, and the solo record is uh, is exciting. But is there anything on that? You know, I've always wanted to, or someday I'm gonna. Well, I mean, there's always people I've always wanted to play with that I haven't had the chance to yet, for sure. But you know, for me, it's really about continuing to explore the bass and to. I mean, I just feel like there's no, there's no end to it, and I, I continue to find things that I wish I had figured out years ago, you know? Because, I, I mean, this is a bass, it's so physical, you know, just things that help make it a little easier to play. So just a constant push to practice and to, and to figure out this instrument that I've already been playing for 30-something years, but to, um, just to try to get closer to the sound that I want to get and to the ability to speak uh, more clearly on the instrument and to explore that with great musicians who are into the whole um, way of playing that's where everybody's listening on a very high level. Are you playing any electric at all? Unfortunately, I haven't been. I mean, I love the electric bass. I love electric bass players. I'm super in affected by all the great electric bass players, you know. But I just don't play it these days. And uh, I mean, I play it at home sometimes, but... I, I love the electric bass, and thank God for all those great electric bass players. I, my, my thing these days, and with Hudson, has been a good example, where you know I could have done some of the tunes on electric bass, but I really wanted to see if I could transfer that information to upright and to have it speak in the midst of a kind of a dense surrounding. And it, I think it works. So that's kind of my goal these days is to what what I might have gone quicker to, to do something on electric bass to try to make it work on the upright. You're an ambitious person, aren't you? <laughs> I, I don't think of myself that way, actually, but, you know, some days. <laughs> right. Last question, Larry. What would you be if you weren't a bass player? Something outside of music. Um, well, uh, what I always wanted to be as a kid was a doctor. And I'd still like to be a doctor, but now it's too late, I think. Finally, it's too late. Or, um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say a doctor. That would be something, you know, if I get to, to you know, help people every day. Well, it's a good thing you became a bass player so you didn't disappoint your parents by becoming a doctor. Exactly. <laughs> well, Larry Grenadier, it's great getting to meet you face-to-face -face finally after all our uh, online correspondence. By the way, folks, can you tell we're at a bass convention here? <laughs> the 2017 ISB, International Society of Bassists Convention, with our good friend Larry Grenadier. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com.